presentation will deal with findings from a randomized phase three trial uh, comparing boracitinib, uh, a cool new IDH12 uh, inhibitor, versus placebo in patients with residual or recurrent grade two glioma. The lead study author, Dr. Ingo Mellinghoff of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, will present the findings. Dr. Mellinghoff. Great. Um, thank you very much for coming and um, your interest in our work. It, as the other speaker said, it's really so important to share the news of what we're, what we're trying to do in our fight against cancer. And so thanks for your interest, thanks for coming and, and taking notes. Thank you also, Dr. Grelo, for putting this together and, um, and uh, introducing us. So I have the uh, privilege of um, presenting this on behalf of many investigators that you see here, as well as the study sponsor, Servier. I thought it would be um, helpful before getting into the details to um, give you a little bit of background why we think it is an important trial and an, that addresses an important problem. It addresses um, the problem of low-grade diffuse glioma in adults. And specifically, um, it addresses, it's a disease that affects patients who are about 40 years old. So these are young patients at the height of their professional and personal lives with many obligations. And the standard of care for this disease right now, you have two options. One is you watch and wait a little bit and let the tumor grow a little bit because the tumor does grow always in the absence of treatment, or you commit to radiation to the brain and chemotherapy, which does not cure you and has significant toxicity. So that is not a great choice you have to make. And many uh, patients, of course, prefer to push that decision out because the therapy doesn't uh, cure you. What we are showing in this study, um, and I'll show you the details in a minute, that a treatment with an oral precision medicine therapy can reduce the reduction in the risk of tumor progression by 61%. So that is, we think, an, a significant um, sign of efficacy that has the potential to change the landscape in this disease. I'm gonna give you a very general overview of brain cancer uh, primary malignant brain tumors in adults are mostly what we call diffuse gliomas. These are gliomas that um, infiltrate the normal brain and causing a lot of um, difficulty, cognitive and, 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 of course, physical disability. You can think of diffuse glioma, which is by far, you know, 80% of all malignant primary brain cancers in adults are gliomas. And you can think of them in two big groups. There are the tumors without the IDH mutation, and then there are tumors with the IDH mutation. IDH stands for isocitrate dehydrogenase, which is a metabolic enzyme um, that, when it carries a mutation, acquires a function it normally doesn't have. So it is a gain-of-function mutation that has a very unique uh, effects on the molecular composition of the tumor, on the presentation of the disease, on treatment response, and so on. So we have learned so much. These mutations were described for the first time in 2008. And we have learned so much in the last 15 years that we have revised the WHO classification of brain tumors multiple times. So as of 2021, um, IDH mutant glioma is its own disease entity for all those reasons. What am I um, talking to you about? I'm talking about this drug, boracidinib. Uh, what boracidinib uh, does, it blocks the mutant enzyme. On the right, you see a little cartoon. I apologize, I couldn't resist the temptation of putting this cartoon in there. So the normal enzyme, isocitrate dehydrogenase, catalyzes the decarboxylation of, site of isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate. And when there is a mutation, a completely new metabolite is being made. And what this drug does, it binds to the mutant enzyme turns off the enzyme, and then uh, results in a dramatic reduction in the amount of this metabolite. And this is not just an idea that this happens. We actually proved that this happened because we conducted a surgical stu study separately from what I'm talking about today, where patients who needed 
brain tumor surgery with IDH mutant gliomas, received the drug for several weeks, um, this drug, and um, we took out the tumors and we measured all these things that I'm showing on the cartoon, and we know for sure that the drug does reduce the, ends, the levels of the metabolite by over 90%, and also reduces tumor cell proliferation, epigenetic, gene expression changes, and so on. So leading into this current phase three trial, we had a pretty uh, good idea what the drug is doing in tumor, um, in tumor tissue at the molecular level and through the blood-brain barrier. And I would like to emphasize that this drug, unlike almost every other drug, was specifically developed with brain cancer in mind and has a high ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. That's an important part here. So the design, briefly, um, to just give you some uh, bullet points, it is a phase three global double-blind randomized study uh, with a crossover option. Vorasidenib is the drug I just mentioned to you. It was compared with placebo. We had a very rigorous central review of all MRI scans of the brain for all patients through an independent review committee that was blinded to the treatment assignment. And the treatment focused on WHO grade two IDH mutant diffuse glioma who were not in need of immediate chemotherapy or radiotherapy. That's why we uh, could design in such a way. We enrolled a total of 331 patients at 77 centers across 10 different countries. And what was remarkable about that, this happened during the COVID pandemic, so there's a real, there was a real need um, uh, in our patient population to come and join the study. And, um, there were three pre-specified analyses in this study, the first based on the number of uh, progression events. The first uh, interim analysis was um, after 55 progression events for futility, we passed that, and then there was a second interim analysis for superiority or futility, and then there was a planned third analysis, but the second interim analysis was so clear and showed um, efficacy so clearly that the Data Safety Monitoring Board um, advised that we unblind patients, and patients um, were offered the opportunity now to uh, cross over to the Vorsite in the bar. Uh, in terms of the results, the uh, hazard ratio, as you can see here, you, you saw uh, HR, you know what that means, um, was 0 0.39, so that's a 61% reduction in risk of progression-free survival. And the time to next intervention which is an important uh, key secondary endpoint. Um, the hazard ratio was uh, 0 0.26, so that's an even more dramatic effect in the reduction uh, of pushing out the time when they need the next therapy. Um, so we are um, really very excited about these results, and um, so are our patients, and we have a lay summary that will be available through this barcode here. So thanks again for your interest. Thank you very much, Dr. Mellenhoff. And now we'll invite ASCO expert Dr. Glenn Lesser to share a few additional comments about the significance of the research. Thanks, Dr. Grelo. It's a pleasure to be here today and, and provide some comments on uh, the presentation you just had. So low-grade gliomas uh, are diagnosed in about 4,000 patients a year in the U.S., give or take. Uh, and it's no been known for some time that they have, a, in general, a very favorable natural history and response to therapy, which is unusual in the brain tumor world. And over the last decade or so, that natural history that's favorable in response to therapy has been linked to the presence of IDH mutations in the tumor. And in fact, it's only those patients whose tumors harbor low-grade glioma mutation, uh, IDH mutations that uh, get that benefit from our therapy. Um, the therapy, when it's needed, though, in these patients will typically involve chemotherapy and, and a course of radiation. And there's been great concern over the long-term effects of that therapy, uh, particularly neurocognitive uh, effects of the radiation, uh, leading to memory loss and functional decline in a proportion of the patients. And if you speak to these patients, almost all of them describe some long-term effects of their therapy. Um, combine that with the fact that these tumors are typically diagnosed in people in their third, fourth, and fifth decades of life, and, and add a prolonged survival, and it's the perfect recipe for really decimating people in the prime of their life, their most productive years, raising families, 
long term of, of really suffering the effects of our therapy. Uh, and so what you've just heard is uh, a trial that really was well done and well thought out to use an oral targeted, well-tolerated therapy to see if we could delay the use of our standard chemotherapy and radiation. And as you've seen, the results are quite striking and they're statistically highly significant. And more importantly, they're clinically very, very significant and important. And the results of this study really suggest that in selected patients with IDH mutant low-grade gliomas, we can potentially delay the use of these toxic chemotherapies and radiation maybe for years, if not many years, uh, and as a result, delay the long-term uh, toxicities of, of those therapies in, in a group of patients who typically are uh, uh, experiencing long-term survival. Terrific, thanks for that perspective. And uh, while this agent is not yet FDA approved, so we cannot go back and use it in clinic tomorrow, it does have FDA breakthrough status, I believe, and it's moving along fast. So hopefully we will have it available in the near future.